Hi everyone, my name is Ashish. I'm a junior doctor working in the UK. In today's video, I wanted to talk about all the major changes which have been brought out in the new core surgical training portfolio. So if you're someone who's planning to apply for core surgical training in the year 2022, then this is the video for you. I'll be talking about all the areas of this portfolio and how you can improve your CV so that you can maximize your chance of getting into core surgical training in the year 2022. If you want to support my work on this channel, you can do so by clicking on the like button, sharing this video and subscribing to this channel. So let's talk about all of those areas. The first area is commitment to specialty. Now there are some major changes in this area. So they have introduced the section where if you have MRCS Part A, then you score quite high. So if you have sat and passed the MRCS Part A examination, you get three marks in this area. If you have sat but failed the MRCS Part A examination, you get one mark. But if you have never booked an MRCS Part A, then you get zero marks. The next thing is attendance at surgical courses. So if you have attended more than two surgical courses, then you get the highest marks in this area. The next one is completion of a surgical taster week. So if you have attended four to five days of surgical taster session, you get three marks, which is the highest marks in this area. And if you have completed a surgical elective, you get quite a lot of marks, which is three marks again. So these are all the areas which show commitment to specialty. So try to work around all these areas so that you can show commitment to specialty. And this is the first section of this portfolio. This slide shows all the courses which are accepted by the Royal College of Surgeons when you're applying for surgical training. And if you have attended two or more of these courses, then you will score the highest marks in this area. So you can pause the video here, have a look at all these um, courses and try to attend and complete a few of them. The next one is qualification and additional degrees. Now, if you have a PhD or MD by additional research, you get the highest marks. If you have a bachelor's degree in addition to the primary medical qualification, which is your MBA base, with a first class honors or equivalent, you get the highest marks. But if you have other single year postgraduate degrees, such as MSc, MA, MRES, or MPhil, then you still can score some marks in this area. But if you're someone who hasn't done any degrees uh, during their medical college or after their medical college, then don't be discouraged. You can just leave this area and you can focus on the other sections so that you can improve those sections and maximize your chances to get into core surgical training. The next section is awards or prizes. So if you have been awarded a national prize in medicine, then you score the highest here. Or if you have a high achievement award for your MBBS degree, which was awarded to no more than top 15% students, then you get six marks. But if you don't have both of these, then you still can score a bit according to the different levels of prizes or awards which you have received. And if you don't have any of those, then don't be discouraged. Focus on the other areas of the portfolio. The next section of the portfolio is QIPs or clinical audits. And this is where you can work so that you can maximize your chance of getting into core surgical training because it gives you a lot of marks here. So if you have played a leading role in the design and implementation of sustainable change, that is more than one completed cycle using QI methodology or clinical audit, and you have presented the complete results at a regional or national meeting, you get 11 marks. So keep this in mind. I've made a detailed video on how to do a QIP. If you are someone who is back in their home country, then try to do a QIP or clinical audit in your own country. If you're someone who's working in the NHS, try to do it here. And this will give you a huge advantage because it is worth a lot of marks. So try to focus on doing a QIP and presenting this QIP. And this will be really, really beneficial. The next area is teaching experience. And this will again give you quite a lot of marks. So if you're someone who hasn't done any additional degrees, who 
hasn't received any awards then you can teach other people you can work with local tutors to design and organize a teaching program so that you can enhance organized teaching for healthcare professionals or medical students at a regional level and the criteria also says that if you have con contributed regularly to teaching over a period of approximately 3 months or longer and you have evidence of formal feedback then you get 8 marks which is quite a lot of marks so try to do things in this area and this will give you a huge advantage the next section is training and teaching and i feel that they have made this section a bit more difficult because if you have a masters level degree or a pg cert or pg diploma you get the highest marks but if you have any other teaching training which lasted between 5 and 20 days then it will give you 3 marks but if you haven't done that and if you have done a teaching course which lasted less than 5 days then you get slightly lower marks so don't be discouraged try to find out such courses which last between 5 and 20 days and you can maximize your points in this area as well the next one is presentation so if you have given an oral presentation at a national or international meeting it will give you the highest marks in this area but if you have shown more than one poster at national or international medical meetings you get five marks so try to work on a research project and try to present it in a national or international meeting and this will help you a lot in maximizing your points the next section is publications so if you are a first author or joint first author of two or more PubMed cited original research publications you get the highest marks so try to publish your paper in a PubMed cited journal and keep this in mind that case reports case series or opinion articles do not matter so it has to be an original research publication so keep all of those things in mind when you are going for publications of your research the next section is about leadership and management so if you are someone who has held a national leadership or managerial role for six or more months and you can demonstrate a positive impact through this role then you get the highest score in this area and if you have held a regional role then you get five marks and if you have held one of those local roles then you get a score of three so if you have held any of these roles then you can score in this area but if you haven't don't be discouraged try to improve your score in the other areas of this portfolio so that is all of the core surgical training portfolio for 2022 and i feel that they have made it a bit more difficult and complicated it was much easier for 2021 but still you can work on these areas you can work on your cv you can work in the nss as a non-trainee and you can do all of those things and you can apply for 2023 if you are someone who doesn't feel that they have made their cv strong enough to apply for 2022 don't be discouraged keep working on your cv keep working on the things which you think you can improve on and you'll definitely get in i hope that this video helped you out please like this video share this video so that other doctors can get help from this and subscribe to this channel i'll see you soon thanks a lot for watching